Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I have been a cardiologist at the Texas Medical Center for more than 30 years. Today we are going to look at uh, cardiac pulse variations. Everything you need to know about pulse we are going to cover. So let us begin. In order to explain the pulse, I am going to use the hemodynamic graph from a cardiac catheterization lab. When the ventricular pressures rise above the left and right atrial chambers, the, the mitral and the tricuspid valves close that leads to the isometric contraction of the ventricle. When the ventricular pressure rises that of the aortic diastolic pressure, the ventricles eject the blood thus rising the arterial pulse waveform. It reaches a peak then it is followed by a descent with a decrease in left ventricular pressure. The dichrotic notch as it is called represents the closing of the semilunar valves namely the aortic and the pulmonic valves. Then gradually the aortic pressure comes down as the ventricular pressures decrease with uh, isometric relaxation. This pulse wave is transmitted to the rest of the body and that is how we feel the pulse in the neck by palpating the carotids at the radial pulse we can feel the pulse similarly we can feel the pulse at the femorals popliteus and of course the dorsalis pedis now we're going to look at uh, the the pulse itself the waveform the morphology and then we are going to look at the rhythm look at the alterations in pulse pressure pulse volume pulse upstroke pulse downstroke pulse deficit respiratory variations and much more. So, we will be covering a varieties of uh, changes that we can di diagnose by just palpating the pulse. In, in the Ayurvedic medicine, the doctor says he can just feel the pulse and diagnose what is wrong with the patient. I would not go that far as telling whether, you ha whether a patient has brain tumor or not, but I can tell you that by palpating the pulse, we can understand a lot more about the pathophysiology that is happening inside the heart chambers and also in the vascular system. So, let us look at some of these changes. Pulse pressure. Pulse pressure is the difference between the peak systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure of the arterial pulse. If the systolic pressure is 120 and the diastolic, diastolic pressure is 80 millimeters of mercury, then the pulse pressure is 40 millimeters of mercury. The normal pulse pressure is between 30 to 60 millimeters of mercury. So, we do not want to confuse the pulse pressure with either the systolic or the diastolic blood pressure that we measure using the blood pressure machine. So, a pulse pressure just reflects the amount of blood that is pumped with each heartbeat and it gives us a lot of information about the rate, the rhythm, the, the volume and many other things. So, let us look at some of these things now. Pulse rate. The way you measure the pulse rate is you can palpate the radial artery with your index and middle finger and count the number of uh, pulses for 15 seconds and multiply that by 4 that will give you the pulse rate per minute. The normal pulse rate is uh, between 60 and 100 beats per minute. The patient is considered to have bradycardia when the pulse rate drops below 60 beats per minute and the patient is considered to have tachycardia when the pulse rate jumps up above 100 beats per minute. Now, let us talk about the rhythm. When you palpate the pulse, not only do you feel the pulse, but you also like a musician count the pulse on the time interval between each pulse. If the time interval between successive pulses are equal, then we are dealing with a regular rhythm. If the time intervals between the pulses are different, then we have two different varieties. They can be either regularly irregular, like if you are dealing with a patient with ventricular bigeminy or the pulse 
can be irregularly irregular. There are only a couple of conditions where you're going to feel the pulse irregularly irregular. Whenever you feel a pulse to be irregularly irregular, you should think of atrial fibrillation, multifocal atrial tachycardia, or multiple PACs or PVCs. You're already beginning to diagnose some of the possible underlying etiologies by just palpating the pulse. Now let's look at a different variation, and that is the respiratory variations. The pulse volume and the pressure varies with inspiration and expiration. Let's look at the normal inspiratory and expiratory changes in the pulse. During inspiration, the normal pulse pressure drops by 10 millimeters of mercury and it increases during expiration by 10 millimeters of mercury. However, if the pulse variation is more than 10 millimeters, and if you're talking about 20 millimeters of mercury pulse variation between inspiration and expiration, then we are talking about uh, pulses paradoxes. You see pulses paradoxes in patients with uh, cardiac tamponade. That will be an important sign. Now let's look at another type of pulse. As we discussed in the beginning, we have the diastolic phase followed by a smooth uprise in the pulse pressure. Then we have the downslope, which is followed by a dichrotic notch and then gradual decrease to the diastolic baseline pressure. However, in certain patients, the upstroke could be slow and prolonged. As a result, the upstroke time duration is increased. This is known as tardus, that means slow. So this we see in patients with the prolonged left ventricular ejection phase. And the most important conditions include the aortic stenosis, where there is prolonged left ventricular systole, which produces this pulses parvus at tardus. Next, we're going to look at pulses alternant. Here we see a normal pulse followed by a pulse which is uh, which has a lower systolic pressure and reduced pulse pressure. This is commonly seen in patients with heart failure and low cardiac output states. When patients display this type of pulse waveform with a history of congestive heart failure, they are supposed to have significant left ventricular dysfunction with a poor prognosis. Now let's talk about uh, pulses bigeminis. Bigemini means topic beats following every other normal QRS complex. Of course, we have taken this from a arterial line or in a cardiac cat lab where we are monitoring the arterial pressure. Here you have the normal here we have the normal beat and that is followed by a premature supraventricular beat because of the reduced or our interval there is reduced filling time as a result the left ventricle fills inadequately resulting in, in an inefficient pulse and if we see this on a regular pattern just like uh, atrial bigeminy on the electrocardiogram you may feel a pulse that is uh, pulses bigeminous so the next time you see uh, on the monitor the patient is having ventricular bigeminy or atrial bigeminy just put your hand on their pulse, radial pulse, and see if you can appreciate the same reflection in the peripheral pulse. And that will sort of uh, stick to your mind what pulses bigeminous mean. As I said, it can be found in patients with uh, atrial or ventricular premature beats. You can usually appreciate this on an arterial line monitoring on the screen. And this may also signal that you need to check their electrolytes and look for any evidence of ischemia that may be precipitating these uh, ectopic beats. Now we're gonna move on to pulses bispherians. That means there are two systolic peaks with each waveform along with the dichrotic notch, which is a separate uh, event altogether. Bispherians means striking twice it's like a hammer hitting. So you feel that twice. Notice 
the two peaks appear during the upstroke of the pulse waveform and not during the dichrotic notch which we are going to talk about in a minute. This type of uh, pulse waveform we see in patients with aortic regurgitation or in patients with aortic regurgitation along with aortic stenosis and this can also be seen in patients with uh, severe hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. We talked about the dichrotic notch. The dichrotic notch represents the aortic valve closure. Sometimes we can see a pretty prominent dichrotic pulse and this is usually felt best when you palpate a carotid artery. A percussion wave is seen during systole. The dichrotic wave comes during diastole on the downslope of the arterial or radial pulse waveform and this may represent low cardiac output along with high systemic vascular resistance. So, we are talking about uh, a situation where we have patients with congestive heart failure with uh, low cardiac output and high systemic vascular resistance. Now, let us talk about the uh, hyperkinetic pulse. In contrast to the pulses tardus et parvus, look at the shape of this waveform. We, uh, we have a sharp upstroke and, and a fairly sharp decline and look at where the dichrotic uh, notch is. So, there are, diff there are several things that are pretty obvious in this uh, pulse waveform. One, we have a sharp upstroke, then we have a fairly sharp decline, then we have the dichrotic notch and we also see an increase in pulse pressure. This type of pulse is uh, seen in patients who have hyperdynamic circulation such as those with mitral regurgitation, aortic regurgitation, ventricular septal defect, anemia, hyperthyroidism or pregnancy all of whom have high cardiac output state. So, this represents a high cardiac output or hyperkinetic circulation. Sometimes in young people with no evidence of any one of these abnormalities, we see hyperkinetic circulation. These are the people who have ejection fractions in the range of 70, 80 percent. They may also have a little tachycardia. Now, let us talk about pulse deficit. What is pulse deficit? When you are dealing with atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response or patients with multifocal atrial tachycardia or atrial flutter with rapid ventricular response which is irregular, not all the beats are going to be conducted to the radial pulse. In such situations, if you listen to their heartbeat with a stethoscope and at the same time you feel their pulse, uh, then you can see that the heartbeat rate may be much faster than the pulse rate which accounts for the pulse deficit and we can see this because some of the beats are so weak they do not transmit the pulse to the peripheral arteries and we can see this as I mentioned in patients with atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response or if there is evidence of a frequent PVCs or PACs which are coming too close to the normal beat as a result of which there is reduced diastolic filling period which leads to reduced stroke output which may not be appreciated in the peripheral arterial pulses. So, in summary, you know, we talked about the normal pulse rate, we talked about the pulse dysphyrians which we see in patients with moderate to severe aortic regurgitation, we talked about the pulses alternance which is seen in patients with left ventricular failure, we talked about the dichrotic pulse waveform which is seen in patients with myocardial dysfunction. Pulses paradoxes is seen in patients with uh, tamponade and finally, we talked about hyperkinetic circulation which is seen in hyperdynamic situations. Uh, also, we talked about the pulses parvus et uh, tardus which is uh, seen in patients with, with severe aortic stenosis. Did we cover all the different types of uh, pulse variations uh, that we can possibly come across? No, maybe not. One more thing we that is absent pulse. Let us say you are working on the vaults 
The nurse calls you to come and check a patient. This patient just had a cardiac catheterization from the arm and you come and check the patient. Nurse says she can't feel the pulse. What do you do? Well, this patient had a cardiac catheterization. They, they had tubes running through their arteries. What happened? Did the, pers did the person lose the pulse? If so, how do you verify this? Well, you look for cyanosis, mottling, cold extremity. If you see these signs, that means there is an occlusion of the artery as a result of which there is decreased circulation and this is a time to call the cardiology. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very brief overview of uh, cardiac pulse variations. Uh, I hope uh, this will be useful to you. I am Dr. Nick Nickham and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and tell all your friends to watch all our videos that are produced for USMLA and American Board of Internal Medicine examination reviews. If you would like to learn about a particular topic in cardiology, please leave us some comments below and we will do the research and produce an educational video on that particular topic. On that note, I am Dr. Nick Nickham and thank you so much for watching this video.